All right, folks, it's hockey season, baby. And that means it's time for something I'd like to do on a weekly basis here on Sports Night. Talk about the Vegas Golden Knights. So with that, let's welcome in Stanley Cup winner, VGK color analyst with Dave Gosher, who are a great combo, by the way. And speaking of great combos, folks, this man stays clean and sharp with an impeccable suit game on game day. I'm talking about my guy, Shane Knighty, baby. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Uh, Thanks for having me. I appreciate you coming on. You're, you're very welcome. Very welcome. Uh, first, I uh, have to ask you, how are you and yours doing during the pandemic? Well, like everybody else, I think, you know, it's, it's been a challenge and there's been new ones that uh, arise throughout this, but uh, staying safe, healthy uh, for ourselves and those around us has been the number one priority and, uh, you know, trying to keep busy and Excited when hockey came back and the return to play in playoffs, and now excited again as uh, the BGK get ready uh, to start a new season. We're going to see, you know, how they can handle it. There's going to be, you know, there, there's a, there's a lot on the players for them to, to look after themselves, to, to be strict in, in their surroundings and, and where they go to stay as safe and healthy as possible. Um, but I'm very excited. You know, there's going to be hiccups. That's just the nature of what we've seen in the world today. But I think the NHL has done a real good job, along with the Players Association, putting parameters in. Now uh, it's up to the players to get out there and perform and uh, provide a, some entertainment that uh, you mentioned Dave Gosher would bring to you on the television. First of all, I wasn't just saying this because I'm on TV with you right now, man, but you and Dave do a really good job. As far as you guys, this chemistry, was it pretty instantaneous, you two? It is. You know, we, we were good friends and we joke a lot with each other, give each other a hard time, but... Uh, and we did the first game in Vancouver. I'll never forget doing that game uh, for the Golden Knights in year one. And it was a preseason game. And we said, well, let's just see how this goes. Because their timing's a factor. Me knowing when he breaks on his call for I can jump in, when he can jump out. And it, it was just instantaneous. We, we were able to read each other and the chemistry was there. And uh, it, it, you're, you're absolutely right. It's, it's a big factor in making sure we're able to have you know, a good call of the game. And me being a TV guy, you can always tell if guys like each other or don't like each other. And you can tell that it's genuine between you two, man. You guys really do do a good job. Yeah. So well, enough of you. breaking my arm, patting you on the back. Yeah, <laughs> right, I don't mind this. <laughs> How about this? Um, the new look Golden Knights, you're bringing in Alex Petrangelo. Nate Schmidt is going out. Uh, what does that do to the team? Like, what does Petrangelo bring that maybe Schmidt didn't provide? Everything. Well, Nate Schmidt, first off, with Nate Schmidt, incredible hockey player, unbelievably human being, teammate, person, uh, energy that, uh, you know, was infectious. Everybody knows his personality. Uh, but no, it's rare that a team, unless you draft a player, and we said this about Mark Stone, and I'll think about Alex Petrangelo, is you don't get an elite player, elite defense. We're talking top five, maybe top three best defensemen in the NHL. He, he is that good. He, he His numbers, uh, and he's one of those players that affects every facet of the game. He's going to he's gonna be on the power play, possibly number one power play. He's going to be in your number one penalty kill. He's going to be out there when you're down a goal in the last minute of the game. He's going to be out there when you're up a goal defending the lead. He, he can play. He affects every area of the game. He's strong. He's big. He's good defensively. He can match up against the other team's best players. He's good at creating offense. Um, he can. He's so good at breakouts. He's one of the best exit men out of his own end in, in the league. So that helps create offense, get up on the rush. Uh, just a smart, intelligent player. He's an effortless skater. Uh, and go on and on with uh, the type of player he is. So with this 56-game schedule, the Knights will play each team eight times. That's bananas to me. Uh, what about the schedule seems most unusual to you? I think just how condensed it is, first and foremost. It's a lot of hockey these guys are playing. You know, travel is lightened. Uh, the travel schedule isn't as much. And the, you're going to be playing the same teams. I think it, it, it builds, uh, you know, for a little bit more dislike with those certain teams yeah. and you're playing them so often. Um, but there's a challenge in there. Pete DeBoer spoke about it earlier in the training camp about, you know, it's like a baseball style of hockey. You're not used to playing the same team, and it's hard to, to sweep teams in the NHL because, you know, human nature is if you win that first one, there's a little bit of letdown. And, and that's something that's got to be discussed. The, you know, the Golden Knights players the, uh, voiced it. The, you know, the, the mental game is going to need to be there for them to compete against these same, team, same teams. It's like a mini-series. They have two segments where they have four, the team four games in a row. It starts off 
uh, I believe here in January, they have Arizona, the Coyotes, four games in a row. So uh, it's about adapt. I think that's one thing the players recognize is they're going to have to adapt and learn a condensed schedule, the same teams over and over. Rivalries will build. A uh, little bit of dislike for not only that team, but certain individuals uh, across the way from you will build. But I think that adds to the intrigue and adds to the intensity of the game. Absolutely. I couldn't I couldn't agree more. <laughs> the dislike and the intensity will be raised up, and the fans will definitely love that. Obviously, you've been around the business for a long time. You've played hockey. Yeah. You know the business of hockey. So what do you tell Golden Knights fans, VGK fans, when they see you about and they ask you about guys that are gone, the, the, the golden misfits that have left the team. Yeah, that's tough. You know, there was the connection with year one. And uh, I tell them, uh, welcome to being a pro sports fan. <laughs> uh, welcome to the, the world of the NHL. It, it really is. And, you know, before we came out, I was telling you, you know, as a former player, we all know that is part of the business. Trades coming, going. You have, you have, you can't worry about it. But you know it's a reality and that it's going to happen. Um, you know, and unfortunately, there's some popular players and different people, whether it's fired, whether it's let go, whether it's traded. Um, you know, I experienced young. I played junior hockey in Canada. I got traded in the middle of my senior year at 17 years old. I got my old car, everything I owned, which wasn't much in the back seat, and on I moved to another city. So, uh, I, you know, it's something the players understand. It's harder for players, especially, or for fans, excuse me, because fans make connections with certain players. And, you know, they, they love them, and that's that's what fans are about, the passion they bring. Um, but, the, you know, in hockey, just like every other pro sport, is a business. Uh, tough decisions are made, and, and you try to better your team each and every year or try to make tweaks here and there that, that you think can take you to that final place, which is carrying and raising that Stanley Cup. So with that being said, as a player, were you ever let go or traded from a team that you really had a, a really deep connection with that it, it, it hurt it really hurts your heart to actually leave that city, that team, those fans? Yeah, I think you know, there's a few. The first thing I played for the Ottawa Senators for four years, that was the first team I was traded from. And, uh, you know, it, would, it wasn't easy. Those were friends that I had been with four years. I broke into the NHL playing there. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden you move along. It's, it, it's always easier for the players. People don't think of the families. The players, it's easy for the guys because you immediately walk in and you get 20 new friends on that new team. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, but your family trading kids, if they're in school, uh, there's a lot of, and then Boston uh, didn't re-sign me my first stint there. And I ended up going uh, as a free agent to Minnesota a while, but found my way back to the Bruins at the right time. But yeah, it's never easy, but it's, it, it's part of the business. The players really understand and it does hurt, but you move on. With that being said, um, you are you and Ghost are going to get a chance to actually call some games inside and in person again. It's been a while. I mean, how happy you to yeah. be able to do that again? Because you're doing it from afar for the playoffs, right during the bubble, right? Yeah, I was calling it off the TV, off monitors. Uh, very excited, and then we'll still continue to do that for the road, the away games. But uh, home games, uh, you know, will be will be distance. We'll have uh, glass between Dave and I. We'll have all the precautions, but we will be in T-Mobile to call the home games for the Golden Knights. Uh, I'm very excited to see hockey live again. I love watching it any way I can, whether it is television, but obviously uh, live it is the best. And it, it has been a while since March of 2020, right before the pause was the last time I saw a live hockey game. Very excited uh, for it to kick off here this Thursday against the Ducks. Have you ever gone that far, that, that long uh, of time nope. in your life? It's, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, me, my, me neither. Um, now, uh, this is something I definitely wonder about. I got a chance when I was in Boston working up there to go to the, uh, the, uh, the game out at Gillette Stadium between the Bruins and Montreal. The Golden Knights are, are slated to be playing a game up there in Lake Tahoe. How, how cool is that? Hey, it's incredibly cool. <laughs> what an experience. What an opportunity. Uh, you know, as a Canadian kid that grew up playing a lot of hockey in the outdoors. The temperature certainly won't be as bad as I had when I was young, but <laughs> I think, and the players do it. They, they enjoy it so much to have these outdoor games, any type of outdoor setting that's done properly. Uh, it's, it's an incredible experience. One, one as a player, you really need to take full advantage of, uh, soak it in, uh, especially Lake Tahoe. It's uh, something that's never been done. We've seen the outdoor stadiums, uh, massive crowds. We've seen all uh, this would be a, a different setting for the NHL to really look at. And uh, I'm excited not only to see the game, but to see, you know, the views and how it's all going to look. 
Pat, that's cool. Have you, did you ever get a chance to play outdoors as far as um, in the NHL? I didn't in the NHL. It's one, it's one thing I wish I would have been able to do is to experience one of those outdoor games. Uh, I've been able to do as a broadcaster. I've covered the Heritage Classic they had in Winnipeg. Uh, so I've been able to do it that, but I uh, never played in one. I played my share of games outside, uh, both on outdoor rinks or on lakes or uh, frozen rivers, all those areas. But uh, I, I miss doing it uh, in the NHL, and so that's all right. Uh, I enjoy watching them, and I'll be excited to see the Golden Knights take part. Cool, cool. And, and lastly, the most lighthearted thing I'll ask you, what's been your favorite thing to do during the whole pandemic? You uh. Cobra Kai, man, I didn't watch like those episodes yeah. like that. Tiger King, what, what have you been watching? Uh, I've been watching, well, I'm on Yellowstone right now. I was a little late to the game with that, but I absolutely <laughs> love it. Uh, another one uh, that I, I, I found these old ones, so Hell on Wheels, okay. uh, which is in a western of a building, the railway. That was another one of my favorites, but I, I've been cooking. I, oh, wow. I, I, love, the, I love the barbecue smoke. Uh, all that stuff. So that's, I've done a lot of that, you know, with the inability to eat out at all. So it's, uh, uh, I'm a, I got a Traeger grill and, uh, I probably use it and talk about it to the nauseam with my kids, but, uh, I love it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what's the, um, what's the dish? If you're, if you're courting your, your wife again, man, and you want to cook her something on the grill, what, what are you, what are you cooking? I don't know. I, I cook more for, uh, for what I like. My, my son likes uh, the steak. Uh, I like, you know, steak, brisket, tri-tip. Uh, the one thing the family likes is, is uh, smoked chicken wings. Uh, that, that's uh, that's a good, I got a couple of good recipes for that. Not only how I cook them, but then uh, the sauce at the end. I actually did the, tur the Christmas turkey was done on it this year, and it turned out uh, fantastic. So, yeah, I've kind of, I've upped my cooking game. I guess that's the one thing that uh, <laughs> this has really brought along is a little more skill outdoor on the grill. Okay, okay. Are you like me? Did you up your LB game as well? I guess kilos, right? if you're Canadian, maybe? You, you get... uh, I didn't. I've, I've been able to, I would say I took a little bit of time in, uh, you know, through the holidays in December to enjoy it. But uh, no, I've been able to maintain. That's, uh, that's been another thing. I've, I, as soon as March hit, I built a little gym uh, here and uh, made sure I was able to stay on track. Got to make sure those suits fit. <laughs> <laughs> when I put it, started putting them back on. Ah, oh, my God, my God. I appreciate it, man. All right, Shane Knighty, the color analyst for the Vegas Golden Knights on AT&T Sportsnet. My man, I appreciate you joining me, bud. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right.